here's our goal. We have if A is a 2 by 2 matrix, then we want to show that the parallelogram formed by the columns of A is the determinant of A. Uh, absolute value of the determinant of A. Okay, and similarly, if A is a 3 by 3 matrix, then the determinant of A, absolute value of the determinant of A, is the volume of the parallel piped parallel piped uh, formed by the columns of A. Okay, so let's start with a 2 by 2 matrix and let's start with a diagonal 2 by 2 matrix. Alright, so I'd say we have the matrix uh, 0, A0, 0, D. And let's look at the absolute value of its determinant. And its determinant, absolute value of its determinant, is absolute value of A, D. Now let's think about what that means in terms of uh, our R2. Okay, so um, I'll have vector A, which looks like this, and that's point A, so this is length A, and I have vector D, or just, you know, vector 0 D, where this is the point 0 D. Uh, I said that was the point A. Of course, I meant that it was the point A0. And then if I look at the parallelogram formed by these two vectors, then clearly that's a rectangle. And this side was D, and that side was A. So the area is AD. So for a diagonal matrix, check, it's good. Okay, so now let's see what happens if we don't have a diagonal matrix. So let's say our matrix instead looks like this. A1, A2, B1, B2. We know that the determinant of this matrix is unchanged by uh, swapping columns or adding a multiple of a column, a multiple of one column to another. Okay, now my claim is that we can then turn this into a diagonal matrix as long as this is invertible. 
Well, let's just take an aside here and say, well, what if it's not invertible? So let's just come back to that. So what if it's not invertible? Well, if it's not invertible, then we know that the two columns cannot be linearly independent. So if they're not linearly independent, then one would be a multiple of the other. So say A1, A2, and then CA1, CA2. And what would that look like in R2? So we would have our first column would be a vector that looked something like this. And our second column would be a vector that looks something like this. And so the rectangle formed by those two vectors has area 0 uh, because, you know, length times width, well, or, or not rectangle, par parallelogram. Um, it's, you know, base or height, one or the other is going to be 0. So area equals 0. Well, what else do we know about non-invertible matrices? We know that the determinant of a non-invertible matrix is zero. Okay, so now I've said, okay, so what if it's not invertible? Well, it's still true. Okay, so our theorem is still true. Um, the area is zero and the determinant is zero. So now let's go back to the case where it is invertible. So I'm going to go back to our matrix that we had up here, which was A equals a1, a2, b1, b2. Okay, so now um, I am going to add a multiple of column 1 to column 2. We know that does not change the determinant. So I'll have a1, a2, and then I will add um, the multiple of column 1 that I get by multiplying column 1 by minus b over a1. So I'm going to that's multiply that times column 1. So this will be minus b over a1 times a2. And I'm going to add that to column 2. So all I've done here is multiply a column 1, column, uh, multiplied a constant, added a multiple of column 1 to column 2. And when I do that, I get a1, 0, a2, and some stuff down here, minus b over a1, a2, plus uh, b1, it's b1, b1 plus B2. Okay, so um, by the same method, I could come up with some multiple, so I could also, so I've got, I've got a zero here. So what my goal, what I'm trying to do right now is to show that I can find a matrix that's diagonal that has the same determinant as my non-diagonal matrix A. And we know we can do that. Uh, and we don't change the determinant if we multiply one column and then add it to another. So I could do the same thing that I did here and multiply column 2 by something and add it back to column 1. And when I multiply column 2, of course the top will still be 0, so it won't change um, a1, um, I will get, uh, so, so I can do the same thing here. I can multiply 
this business by uh, just um, it would just be minus a2 over all this. So I'd multiply minus a2 over all this and add that to column 1 and then I end up with a diagonal matrix. That has the same and not that it really matters because we know the concept is correct but let's just you know see if we believe this for some random matrix which doesn't prove anything but just you know check ourselves and see if we still think it's true so the determinant of this thing is minus 2 plus 3 which is 1 now let's construct this other matrix it still had 2 here, had 0 here, 0 here, and then minus b1, and b1 is negative 1, so it'll be 1, over a1, which is 2, times a2, which is 3, plus b2, which is negative 1. So now we're looking at the determinant of... 2, 0, 0, 3 halves minus 1, and that equals 3 minus 2, which is also 1. So we probably do have the right matrix here, um, but no matter what, it's diagonal. So I have now trans uh, found a matrix that has the same determinant as this matrix, um, and it's diagonal. And I just showed up here that if we had a diagonal matrix, then the determinant was equal to the area. Um, and so now we can say, so now we can say that the determinant of our other matrix is equal to the de determinant of si some diagonal matrix. And but the question still remains is, is that does that determinant equal the area of the parallelogram that was formed by a1 a2 b1 b2 so now it remains to show that adding a multiple of one column to another results in a matrix for which the parallelogram formed by the columns of this matrix, so of our new matrix, has area equal to the area of the parallelogram formed by the columns of the original matrix. Let's see if I can draw this in any sort of way that is halfway intelligible. Okay, so we'll have a matrix A1, I mean a, a, a vector A1. Let me make it a little smaller.
a vector a1 or a vector a, I'm just call it a vector a, and I have a vector b. Now the area of this parallelogram, if you recall, or the parallelogram uh, formed by these vectors, so I would draw so this is the parallelogram I'm talking about. Uh, something like that. Um, so here's our parallelogram. Imagine that's a parallelogram. And the area of this parallelogram that we remember from geometry is base times height. So let's let uh, vector A be our base. That's a little too light to see. Okay, so we're going to let uh, the length, the magnitude of A be our base. And then our height is the perpendicular distance from the other side of the parallelogram to uh, to this line. So our height is, see, can I draw a perpendicular? Probably not. Perpendicular shouldn't be that hard to draw, right? There we go. So there's our perpendicular distance. Okay, now we also know that if I add a multiple of a, so let's remember this is a, and this is b. If I add a multiple of a to b, then that multiple, let's see what color do I want this one to be, that when I do that addition, uh, what I'm going to get is something that's on this line that's parallel to the line going through A. So I'll just get, I'll get something. I, I don't know what it is, but um, I'll get something. Let's say I get this vector. Okay, so um, I get that vector, and that vector is the vector B plus CA, so some, some constant. Now, um, now I'm going to make the parallelogram formed by these two vectors, by my new vector in my original A. So I'll use a new color. How about that color? All right. So uh, that parallelogram is going to look like this. 
sort of. Well, as close to that as I can get it. Uh, no, that's no good. Um, uh, okay, that, that's as good as I'm going to get. So we'll pretend that's a parallelogram. Um, and the other side is right here. So let me just highlight our new parallelogram so we know what I'm talking about. So our new parallelogram that we have is this parallelogram with one side, one vector forming it is the vector A, and the other vector forming it is this vector B plus CA. Now my claim is that that parallelogram has the same area as our original parallelogram, and our original parallelogram was formed by A and B. So we had A and B formed our original one, and this is A and B plus CA. Now the reason they're the same is they both have the same base. So they both have base A. And the perpendicular distance from one side to the other, or the height, is the same for both of them because we know that the perpendicular distance between any two parallel lines is the same. And so they have the same base and they have the same height, magnitudes. And so the parallelograms have the same area. So now what we have shown, so the whole point of that was to show if I have um, a1, A2, B1, B2, and I find its determinant. That determinant is the same as the determinant I get by adding a multiple of column 1 to column 2 and vice versa, I'm going to add a multiple of my new column 2 to column 1, and I can in that way make a diagonal matrix and we said the determinant of the diagonal matrix we said right from the beginning that was a rectangle so that equals the area formed by columns well now, just going backwards, if I take my diagonal matrix, I can make this matrix by adding multiples of columns um, to each other, and that has the same determinant, which also has the same area, because when we add col multiples of columns to other columns, we get the same area, and we also get the same determinant. So we have now shown that um, the determinant uh, the absolute value, I put the absolute values in the wrong place, or that means determinant. Anyway, the determinant A1, A2, B1, B2 equals the area of parallelogram formed by columns. Um, now, one quick thing here, just to be aware of, when we were back here, uh, we might have had a problem if we ended up with a matrix that looked like this. But then that matrix would not be invertible. And so... Um, if it's not if it is not invertible then we showed that it was okay um, that it still equaled the area because the area was zero now let's think about a parallel piped parallel piped 
parallel and pi pin. Pi pin. Okay, so uh, the same argument is going to follow that if I had a diagonal have a diagonal matrix then I can see that's a uh, what do you call those things rectangular prisms so um, so a box that looks like that which has volume length times width times height, which would be A times B times C. So the same argument follows if we have a diagonal. Now, we also have the same argument about a non-invertible matrix, because if we have a non-invertible matrix, then that would be mean that uh, we, we, we could write one column as a linear combination of the other two, which means uh, I would have one vector that looks like this and another vector that looks like this, and then I'd have something that was a linear combination of the two and so these would all be in the same plane. So the volume is zero. And the determinant would be zero because it's non-invertible. So that's taken care of. We've taken care of diagonal matrices. We've taken care of non-invertible matrices. And let, let's see if a similar argument holds for parallel pipeds as held for the parallelograms. So I will see if I can draw this. Um, let's say I'm trying to make this parallel piped. I'm going to pause it for a minute and uh, see if I can draw it without taking up too much time. So that's my attempt at a parallel piped. So let's make this vector A1 and this vector A3. And now picture the entire plane that's formed by the span of A1 and A3. So I will attempt to draw it. Okay, so, and of course it goes on forever, but so that's that plane is the span of A1 and A3. The third vector of our parallel piped will be A2. So that'll be A2. Let me label these. So we had A1 We had A3, and then I don't remember what color I used here, A2. Uh, so now let's think about the plane that is parallel to the span of A1 and A3, but goes through A2. So now I will attempt to draw that.
Okay, so the plane that I just drew is... Well, that's a pretty terrible drawing, but the plane that I just drew is the plane that's parallel to the span of A1 and A3, but goes through A2. Now, going back to our original parallel pipette, where we had this was A1, this was A3, and this is A2, the volume of that is the area of the base formed by A1 and A3 times the altitude to A2. So, uh, so that distance right there. Now, similarly to uh, what we did with the parallelogram, we can see that the altitude from the span of A1, A3 to everywhere on this plane that we made and we made the plane, the plane was the uh, uh, span of A3 added to A2, that every point on that plane has the same altitude to the base of our parallel pipette. So that means that any parallel pipette that I draw that is in that plane is going to have the same volume as our original parallel pipette because it'll have the same base and the same altitude. So let's just make it Well, let me start by making the base just a parallelogram. And we'll make this altitude. Uh, we'll, we'll make we'll make the um, We'll make the parallel pipette that has uh, is the height is perpendicular to the base uh, span one span span a one a three. So we've got that one. Um, now we can similarly adjust add columns to so we we have our matrix that has. Um, a11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, and A31, A32, A33. It, subscripts written a little bit differently because we're thinking about these as columns, where this is the column A1, this is A2, and this is A3. So we know that we can add multiples of one column to another and we'll end up with having the same determinant. And so doing that, we can end up with something that um, is a rectangular, rectangular prism, um, and that rectangular prism would have the area or the volume of length times width times height. And so we can turn this turn this into a diagonal matrix, just like we were with the parallelogram. Um, and once we have the diagonal matrix, then we know its area is the determinant of, or its volume is the determinant of that diagonal matrix. And so then, just like before, we can say the volume of the 
parallel pipe bed formed by these columns is also equal to the determinant of that matrix. So we just followed the same same procedure where we show that um, the the height the height is going to be the same for everything that's on that plane and we can get that by adding a multiple of so um, rather we can write every vector in this plane as a2 times something that's in the span something b where b is in the span of a1 and a3. Let me be a little more specific about where this came from. So this is a1 and this was a2 and And since that has the same altitude as our original parallel pipehead, they have the same volume. So I already know that I can do column replacements on column 1 and column 3 to get a rectangle that has the same area as the original parallelogram in my parallel pipehead, whatever shape that is. And now I'm saying I can do a column replacement with just A1 and A2 that will get a parallel pipehead that has the same volume as the original parallel pipehead.